In this lesson, I'll show you how to solve a double inclined plane force problem. The question reads, find the tension in the cord given the double inclined plane shown below. So we have two masses, this one being lighter than that one, and they're both connected by this cord. We want to find out the tension that is being exerted on this cord. To do this, we have to do several different calculations, and they all involve the formula F is equal to MA. That's Newton's second law, where force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Let's concentrate on mass one first, and then we'll use what we learned about mass one for mass two. So in this particular mass, there is a force due to gravity exerted downwards, directly downwards, from this mass. And the same can be said about this mass. There is a force due to gravity pulling it down. What we will do is find out the magnitude of these two vectors. So I'll start with this one. We can find out the force going directly downwards using the formula that I wrote earlier, where force is equal to the mass of 12 times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Multiplying these two values, let's use your calculator, 12 times 9.8 is equal to 117 decimal 6. 117 decimal 6 newtons. That's the unit for force. Now let me do the same thing for this mass, and I'll show you why this is important later on. This is a very important number to start with. So we have force is equal to 20 kilograms, that's the mass, times 9.8. Again, using our calculator, 20 times 9.8 gives us 196 newtons. Now, to find out the tension in this cord, we need to find the force along this plane and the force along this plane. Because this vector can be broken down into two vectors, this will be one of the vectors that it can be broken down to and a second one. So adding these two blue vectors will give us this orange. And the same thing can be said about this orange vector here. So we have the x component and the y component and the x and the y component. I can actually find out the force along this plane. And here's how. So here's another look, a bigger illustration of what I already have. There is a vector going down. That makes a 40 degree angle along the horizontal. So that's 40 degrees. And I'm looking for that vector. So if this is 40 and this is a 90 degree angle, 40 plus 90 is 130. 180 minus 130 is 50. So the angle here is 50 degrees. Now remember, we have another vector the y component right there, and rather than drawing the y component right there, I can draw it right here. So what I have is another right triangle, where that's the 90 degree, that's 50 degrees, and again, that was the vector that we found earlier, the orange one, it has a magnitude of 117.6. Using what I know about trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, I can now find out the magnitude of this component, of the vector. So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent, this thing, over the hypotenuse, which we have as 117.6. And the angle is 50 degrees. So that's 50 degrees. And the hypotenuse is 117.6. All I have to do is multiply both sides by 117.6. And what this will do is cancel out these two numbers, giving me the adjacent value. So I have 117.6 times cosine of 50, and that gives me 75.59 newtons as the adjacent value, which represents the magnitude of that vector, 75.59. And remember, that's in newtons. This is important because these two masses are connected. And in order to find the tension, we need to create two equations and solve them simultaneously. Before I do that, let me do the exact same calculation here. And I'll do it quickly now, now that you know how it's done. So the angle here was 25. Therefore, that angle has to be 180 minus 90 minus 25. 180 minus 90 minus 25 makes 65 degrees. 
So I'll draw a triangle that represents this part right here. We have again that vector going down and a 90 degree angle formed right here. This angle is 65 and this angle is 25. If we find out this arrow by using trigonometric functions, again cosine, we will find the magnitude of the x component of this vector. Let's go ahead and do that. We have again cosine of 65 times the magnitude of the vector going down, it was 196, and that gives us 82.83. So 82.83 newtons is the magnitude of this one. Now, since these two masses are connected, we have to create two equations to find out the tension. At this point, you have to make an assumption as to where the masses will go, whether it be this way or that way. I'm going to make the assumption that it will be this way. And if you make the assumption going that way, then your equations will look like this. Whereas if you make the assumption of them going this way, you'll still get the same answer, but the equations that you create will be a little different. So again, I'm going to make the assumption that it is going clockwise. If it's going clockwise, and remember, force is equal to the mass times acceleration, I'll say that tension minus 75.59, remember, this represents the force, is equal to the mass of 12 times the acceleration. And the other formula will be the force going in this direction, which we found to be 82.83, 82.83, minus the tension is equal to its mass of 20 kilograms times the acceleration. The acceleration should be the same because these two masses are linked. All right, so to find out the tension, we have to solve these two equations simultaneously. And what I mean by that is I'll solve for T here, or you can solve for A, it's up to you. I think solving for T is easier. So I have T is equal to 12A plus 75.59 and substituting this expression right into there, I will end up getting the acceleration, but I can use the acceleration to find the tension afterwards, just like how you solve a linear system. Okay, so substituting that expression into there, I have 82.83 minus this whole expression, which means minus 12a minus 75.59 is equal to 20a bringing all the like terms to one side, I have 82.83 minus 75.59 is equal to 20a plus 12a. See how minus 12a becomes positive 12a? Adding these up, we get 32a, and subtracting these two, 82.83 minus 75.59, gives us this value, 7.24, and dividing both sides by 32 now, the 32's cancel out. 7.24 divided by 32 makes 0 0.226 meters per second squared as the acceleration. That is the acceleration of the system. Now to find the tension of the cord, we will take this value and throw it right into there, right into here. So I have 12 times the number that I just got plus 75.59 and that makes 78.30 as the tension. So the tension, which is a force, is 78.3 newtons. So that is the tension along this cord given the two masses being connected. So there you have it. Now you know how to solve double inclined plane force problems.